Hello. It's our final day on the painting project, and we need to get started. But first, I want to take a second and shout out some of the paintings that are looking great so far. Let's take a look. Shout out to Kinsey. Really neat cube, nice curved shadow on the sphere. Excellent work. Shout out to Haley. Nice large rectangular prism. Beautiful highlight on the sphere. Killing it. Shout out to Haji. Shout out to Lindsay and Abby for this challenging hand position there. Shout out to Aiden. Shout out to Caitlin. Chose to do the legs and the foot kicking this ball. Turned out awesome. Shout out to Sarah. Great idea of filling the empty spaces on the walls with little rectangular prisms, almost like a canvas hanging on the wall. You can even see little studies of a cylinder and a flower on there. So cool. Shout out to Morgan and to Michaela, getting creative, having those hands reach for a leaf. And Ethan getting really creative, having it not be a hand at all, but a tentacle. Amazing work by Caden. Shout out to Josue. Shout out to Trip. Shout out Shannon. Check out that little clock hanging on the wall. Cool detail. Shout out to Caitlin. Beautiful work on that sphere. Shout out to Nick, to Lakin. Shout out Taylor. And I love the hand position here. Shout out Maya. Shout out Kimberly. Check out that sphere. Shout out Kendra. This giant drooping hand. Bold shape there. Shout out Jacob. A lot of style in this one. But it's still got the highlight and the shadows and those figures. Check it out. Shout out to Sarah. Shout out to Carly, whose hands are tossing a cube into the sky instead of a ball. Pretty cool. Shout out to Cameron. Kind of some funky colors going here, but check out the sphere. You can see the shadows and the highlight. And shout out to Jonathan. Shout out to Gina, to Tristan, and Camilia for trying these funky impossible cube shapes. And to Hannah for painting beautiful, neat, rectangular prism and sphere. Shout out Francisco. And shout out to Travis and Andrew. Amazing work on that sphere. Those are all the paintings, but we've still got some work to do. Remember that you have to have at least the room, an arm or a leg, and a sphere with faded shadows to be successful. Let me show you some tips how to hack this painting project and be successful on the final day. I'm gonna see if I can paint this project in under 20 minutes. Let's go. I'm starting this painting at 629, so I've got until 649 to complete it. Hack number one, paint using one of the primary colors. If you don't have to take up time mixing up a green or a red purple, you can spend all of your time painting. Now, if you are still painting your walls, to be honest, you're way behind, but I've got a hack for you. Take your brush, dip it into your color, and then dip it in to the black paint for your shadow wall. With blue and black paint, don't even bother mixing them on your plate. Just take a dip of water and spread that straight onto your paper. They'll mix while you spread, and you will have saved some time by not mixing them on the, on the styrofoam plate. You can do the same thing with your light wall. Just take a dip of blue and a dip of white, a dip of water, and spread it. As soon as you paint your walls, wipe any of the extra wet paint away with a paper towel or a rag. To hack your cube and make the angles easier to figure out, start just above the corner of your room and paint two diagonal lines. Then paint two parallel diagonal lines below that to make a diamond. Bring three vertical lines down off each corner of your cube, except for the one in the back corner. You won't be able to see that one. Draw the diagonal lines for the bottom edge of the cube and it'll be done. To fill your cube in quick, use a big square brush. Don't use any water when you fill it in. Just fill one side in with your pure color. In this case, it's blue. To fill in the shadow side of your cube quickly, paint it just like we painted the shadow wall. Take a dip of blue and a dip of black. This time, no water though, and fill it in. Don't bother using your plate. The paint will mix as you fill in that wall. Then do the same thing to paint the light side of your cube. Clean your brush, take a dip of blue and a dip of white, all on the same brush. Remember to use more white than blue because the white is not as powerful and fill it in. To hack your sphere, make it large. A large sphere will be much easier to do your highlights and shadows on. 
The other hack I'm using on this sphere is I'm painting it using water on my brush. This is gonna give my sphere a translucent, glassy, crystal ball look. Paint your sphere quickly, but do take time to make sure your edges are neat and crisp, not fuzzed out. If it's fuzzy, it's not gonna look like a crystal ball, it's gonna look more like a dust ball. The hack to the shadows on the sphere is to paint them using a very dramatic C shape that wraps all the way around to the top side of the sphere. Don't use a mellow kind of flat C shape or it's never gonna have that round spherical look. Paint that C shape and then blend it in towards the bottom and towards the top circular highlight on your sphere. If you can still see a line between the shadows and the base color of your cube, use a clean, dry brush to paint back and forth across that line until it fades away and the shadows blend with the base color. Put a dollop of white paint where the highlight should go, and then just make bigger and bigger circles going out from there until the white paint fades into the blue, and you'll have an instant highlight on your sphere. If you need to paint an arm or a hand quickly, don't be nitpicky and try to draw it out. Just go straight at it with the paint. Start with an arm that is slightly cone-shaped, a little bit bigger uh, at the edge of the page, getting a little bit skinnier as it goes in. I'm going to do two arms to have kind of hands hovering over this crystal ball. And same thing, painting that arm with a little bit of a cone shape. The key to the hand shape is to make a bit of a mountain, a mellow mountain that comes up off the top of the wrist. Once you have your mountain shape, go to the bottom side of the hand and paint two little smiley faces. One for the bottom of the thumb and one for the thumb itself. Then in between there, paint a C shape. Wrap upwards, creating the index finger, and then dip back down into the thumb. And that little C shape creates that glove shape of the hand. Now all these hands are missing are some little fingers that you can see uh, coming out from the inside of the palm. So I make a few brush strokes to indicate those. Since we already have the index finger, we just need the middle finger, the ring finger, and the pinky peeking out from behind the hand. Then fill your hands in quickly. This is an example of a time when painting with a color that you don't have to mix up is going to save you a bunch of time because I can just dip into that blue cup and fill it in. These next steps in the painting are some of the hardest in this project. Here's how you hack them. Use a medium brush to paint a black line down the shadow side of the arm. Then clean that brush off. With a, with a clean, dry brush, go back over the bottom part of that line with your brush halfway on the black and halfway on the blue. Paint several brush strokes back and forth and that line will fade in instantly. The key here is to use a medium brush with half of that brush on the black paint and half of that brush on the blue paint to let those two colors blend together. Then repeat that same process with the highlight on the top of the arm. Painting highlights and shadows on the finger of this hand is the ultimate crux of this project. Shout out to Miss Royalty for mentioning this hack yesterday. This is going to be a great way to be successful on your fingers instantly. Here's how it's done. Use a medium square brush and load it up with your base color. In my case, it's blue. Then use a small brush to paint one corner of the brush with a dollop of white paint and the other corner of the brush with a dollop of black paint. Now you've got all the ingredients you need on that brush to paint a finger with highlights and shadows. Start at the base of the thumb with the black end of the brush on the bottom and slowly make a controlled brush stroke along the bottom edge of that thumb. You'll see a shadow on the bottom and a highlight on the top. You can control how much shadow or highlight you're putting down by which way you tilt the brush. If you tilt toward the shadow side, you'll get more shadow. If you tilt towards the highlight side, you'll get more highlight. You may be able to paint two or three fingers like this before you run out of paint and then you have to load your brush up again. Once your brush is loaded up, you can go through and make little brush strokes for each finger with an instant highlight and shadow on every one of them. And you'll have a beautiful hand so quick. And I finished in 19 minutes and 38 seconds. That's a new record. All right, it's your turn. Let's finish these paintings off and show our skills.